Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. Today in this video, I am going to attempt to make a decent keto egg white hot dog bun. Several weeks ago, I had the honor of being interviewed by Steve over at Serious Keto. In our chat, he mentioned that he is in search of a decent keto hot dog bun recipe. So I thought in this video, I would attempt a couple different kinds because I have several different variations of the original egg white bread recipe and I find different versions of the bread are good for different things. So I have a couple ideas of versions of the batter that would be good as hot dog buns and I wanted to just try them out and see them, test them side by side. The first one I'm going to do is just my best final egg white bread recipe. It is a recipe that has no added fiber and it has butter powder, arrowroot powder, and a little bit of whole egg or yolk powder. I love this recipe for the bread specifically for like a big loaf because it doesn't get as doughy in the center. And when you have a big loaf, you want it to be nice and airy and you want it to be soft and melt in your mouth but you don't want it to be super doughy because there's just too much middle for there to be that much doughiness. And I have found that the added fibers like the acacia fiber and um, psyllium husk and different fibers, oat fiber, they are what contribute a lot to the doughiness of the bread. So I like to use those fibers in smaller things like buns like my butter buns, for example, have acacia fiber in them. And that doughiness from the acacia fiber works really well in that smaller package. It's kind of like how you wouldn't want to have a whole loaf of a biscuit necessarily, because it's just, you have to have the right crust to center ratio to make that biscuit texture work. So that's kind of the same way I feel about my bun recipes versus my bread recipes. But I wanted to try both as hot dog buns um, because sometimes with hot dog buns, especially if you're going to do something that has a lot of toppings, a lot of, you know, ketchup, mustard, relish, or like a chili dog or something that's going to have a lot of sauce, maybe you don't want as doughy of a bread or a bun. Um, maybe you want something that's more bread-like that's going to hold up a little bit better to that. So what I'm going to do is start with my best egg white bread recipe that's more bready. Try that. And then I'm also going to do a batch using my butter bun 2.0 recipe that has the added acacia fiber in it. It also has more of the gelatin powder to give it more of that doughy texture. Now, as far as the hot dog bun pan that I'm going to use, I had a little trouble tracking down the right pan. I love the mesh silicone pans for buns. I think they work great. But for whatever reason, the hot dog bun size is not easy to come by in that style. These are the two that I ended up ordering. I love this pan. The only problem is that it's very, very small. They're like Twinkie size almost. This is the pan that I used for the donuts that I made in the collab video with Janet Greta. And it worked great for that. It works great for making little buns but it's not quite the right size for a hot dog unless you have really mini hot dogs. So then I ordered this one and this is a good size for hot dog buns. I really like it. The only problem is it's gigantic and this is the biggest cookie sheet I have. It's quite large and it doesn't even fit on that. So what I'm gonna end up having to do is cut the pan. I think I'm gonna cut it here. So I have six wells. I was hoping to get a pan where I could have eight wells. If these were a little bit closer together, they could have fit eight on there, uh, but sadly that's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna cut it here and I'm gonna have my six well pan and we're gonna see how it turns out. So now I can do two pans, one like that, and then the other one. I like to put my silicone liners still on the bottom of the pan because since they are mesh, some of the batter can come through. It just makes it easier to clean at the end. So I think that is gonna work pretty well. 
to get my two batches. I'm gonna do full recipes of the two batters that I'm gonna be making. So it'll be interesting to see if there's extra batter left over if I fill these six um, and how many it would make total with the full batch. Both recipes cook at 325 degrees, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my oven preheated. Also for both recipes, I'm gonna spray the pans with avocado oil spray. So the ingredients for both of these bread recipes are very similar. The main thing that's different is the acacia fiber in the butter buns. And then also there's different amounts of different ingredients um, in the two recipes. And it really is amazing how even those little changes of a little bit different of an amount of a certain ingredient makes a big difference in the finished product. In the butter buns, I don't use any whole egg or dried egg yolk powder. And I did want to mention that in the butter buns, I'm going to be skipping the active dry yeast and honey step. That is always an optional step just for flavor. It doesn't really affect the texture. So I'm just going to skip that to keep it simple. And I'm also going to skip the butter extract or butter flavor in the butter buns because I'm not going for a really super buttery flavored bun. I just want it to be pretty basic. All right, let's get started on the best loaf recipe batter and see how that turns out. Course I want to work fast here because I don't want it to fall too much. And we'll see if I have batter left over and if so, how much. If you don't want to invest in a hot dog bun pan, you could totally shape these onto a um, cookie sheet and I bet you could get some. They probably won't be as pretty looking or shaped as perfectly, but they would still be good and work, <laughs> work like hot dog buns. This recipe I know keeps its shape really well because I've made the pull apart buns with it. And so it would be a great choice if you don't have a pan to cook the buns in. Oh, I may use up all this batter. That would be perfect if it made six hot dog buns. Look at that. That is perfect. That makes me very happy. I'm gonna try to smooth these out just a little bit because usually hot dog buns are nice and smooth. See how it works out. I'm gonna throw these in, 325. I'm expecting them to take 20 to 25 minutes to be done. And I'm gonna go ahead and start on my butter bun batter. And um, I'm gonna try to time it so that as soon as I'm ready to put the butter bun buns in, these ones are just coming out so that I can put them in the same spot in the oven because that can make a difference as to how they turn out. The first batch is done. They look amazing and I have second batch ready to go. This is the butter bun batch. The whole batch fit into the six wells perfectly again. So that is wonderful. And I am gonna be doing the butter bun thing where I cook it for 15 minutes, take them out, brush them with butter, and then, and maybe I'll do some flake salt on some of them and keep other ones plain and then cook them for the last 10 minutes. I'm gonna let these cool for five to 10 minutes and then I will take them out of the pan and put them on a wire rack to cool all the way. I'll probably let them cool completely before I try to cut them because typically hot dog buns are not served warm unless they're toasted, which would be another good thing to do. But I'm gonna let these cool all the way before I attempt to use them as hot dog buns. I've got to at least give these ones points for looks because they just look picture perfect. They didn't fall at all, really. They look great. Mm. 
15 minutes of cook time are up on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush these with butter. Looks like they're rising a little bit more and then these ones, but we'll see if they um, sink down a little bit after they're done cooking. Sticking these back in the oven for 10 minutes. These ones look super yummy too. I'm gonna let these cool again, five to 10 minutes before I pull them out of the pan. So those three are the plain ones. And then I have the flake salt ones over here. Okay, I'm ready to get these put together. They're all cooled off. I just have some ketchup and some mustard just to, you know, dress it up a little bit. I usually prefer my hot dogs with like sauteed onions and relish and all kinds of other stuff, but we'll keep it simple today. Let's first look at the texture. So this is the first batch that I made that was my best egg bread loaf recipe. No fiber. This is the one without acacia fiber. It had the yolk powder added and that's what gives the really fluffy texture and the big bubbles. Now onto one of the butter buns. This is one of the ones without the flake salt on top. So you can immediately see that the inside texture is a lot more dense, but it's still got some air bubbles. So it's not like it's memory foam or anything like that. It's very, very soft and mushy. It's more melt in your mouth. So now I'm gonna get these um, set up with the hot dogs here. So these hot dogs are the Teton Valley, or Teton, I always say Valley, Teton Waters Ranch hot dogs, but they're the smaller ones, like the, you know, basic ballpark size. These buns would be a lot better with the um, Polish sausage that they have. They have the really big ones. These buns would also be really good with like bratwurst or something. They're kind of big for these tiny hot dogs. Um, they're, that's just the only size hot dogs I had today. So we'll just make it work here. and a little bit of horseradish mustard. I'm gonna cut these in half for the taste test so I don't just get a whole bunch of bun <laughs> at the first bite. I'll show you what that looks like. So definitely a lot of bread for that tiny of a hot dog. Highly recommend bigger hot dogs or maybe the small, if you have tiny hot dogs like this, the small bun pans, uh, like the Twinkie size ones, I actually think would work better than these giant ones for this size hot dog. All right, so this is the first one that I made, which was my best egg white bread loaf. Not as doughy, more airy. Totally tastes like my memories of eating regular hot dogs with hot dog buns. It's so good. And you can see, even though it's the more airy, not as doughy texture, when you bite it, it does mush down. It does dissolve in your mouth. It's not like chewing on a sponge, um, trying to you know, break a sponge into tiny pieces. It actually does dissolve in your mouth like bread is supposed to. So definitely a winner. Very, very good. All right, I'm gonna try the butter bun, more doughy version. Also very, very good. Of course, with the coating of butter on the top, the flavor of the butter hits your mouth first. And that is always a win. That's always gonna be a winner. So I do recommend brushing with butter. You could do that on these as well. After the 15 minutes of cook time, brush them with butter and you'd get that effect. But I actually do like the doughier texture for the hot dog as well. If, like I said, you're gonna do chili dogs or lots of relish, different things like that, maybe go for um, the first one because I think this will hold up better. But this is not doing a bad job either. So let's see, as far as the best egg white bread versus the butter buns, I'm gonna say my preference is the butter buns. I think turned out really good and it's not so doughy 
that it's falling apart, but it's doughy enough that it just melts in your mouth. It's not dry. It's not choky at all. It's really, really good. So I hope you found that head-to-head -head recipe comparison helpful. I will have both recipes linked down below to like a printable version so you can check those out. These would be absolutely perfect for a summer barbecue. And honestly, if I was going to a barbecue, I would not feel ashamed at all <laughs> packing one of these in my bag and um, bringing my own bun, BYOB, to the barbecue. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing great and I will just see you again in another video.